My name is JC Stewart, and we are playing Last Night FIFA Save My Life. Last Night FIFA Save My Life. If that is what we're going to use with Chris Dark. Chris Dark, how are you? Mate, I'm good. I'm suddenly feeling nervous because <laughs> you've been asking me to do this for a little bit, and um, it's just like work and stuff like that has meant that we never got around to it. We do it now, and yeah. suddenly it all gets serious all of a it sudden. Gets real, doesn't it gets real, doesn't it? All the time. So, how's it work? Like, what, what's the first game that we do? So, the first game, we're going to do club teams, we're going to do our home teams. I'm so Manchester. So it, right, so it's United v Watford. <laughs> I mean, that feels not fair, right? But if I go as Watford and I yeah. win, my win should count for more. It should Do you know what I, mean? I, th- I think that's fair. I think we can. I don't know what it's going to count as more, but the kudos if you win as Watford will be respect. Substantial. Yeah. Well, we're Archie, off. Obviously. You've got a really cheap foul there. Uh, was that a foul? Apparently, yeah. Which worries me because my whole game is going to be my whole my whole game is going to be quite physical towards you. Uh, that's you. my thing. <laughs> that is my thing as well. To be honest, it's just I will take a red card if you're three on goal. I've no I have no problem doing that whatsoever. Right. Yeah, but I think I've got a feeling this referee is going to be a bit. Oh my gosh! That was a crossbar. That was a crossbar. Right. This I think this referee is going to be harsh. You know. Is he a United fan? The problem is I haven't yet got hold of the ball and we're five minutes in. You know what, me and my, uh, my housemates went out the other night to the park to play football and I was like, you know what, I reckon, oh, I reckon... Shit. Oh, bad finish. I was like, you know, I'm tall, I'm not particularly skilled, but I reckon I could be a Peter Crouch type player, you know, hold the ball up, a couple of volleys here and there. I don't, I, I turned out I don't oh, like headering man. the bar. It, uh, it actually really hurts, or headering the ball. Nobody told me this. Oh no, where's he balls. going? This is relentless at the moment. I'm not happy we're at Old Trafford either. Everything about this feels a bit loaded to me. <laughs> well, that was the worst corner of all time. So, there we I've go. just okay. given it back to you, so... Oh, right, here we go. Man. Let's break. Let's break. You've got a bit of pace Let's here. Let's break. Who Come is on. Come on. He's the man. Oh, there we go. No, no, there no, we no, go. No. The thing is, Rashford is just lethal on this game. He is so good. And so is... Um, oh, I've completely forgotten his name. Our number nine, Martial. You know who I love for United in real life? Igalo. I think he's turned out to be oh, one of my yeah, favourite players. He's, well, he's ex Watford as well. Is he? Oh, Come my on. goodness. <laughs> Here we go. This is so Watford. Go a goal ahead of no, but this is also so me in this whole series that we've been doing where I am I'm relentlessly on it and I've lost every oh, single game. You don't know how happy I am that I've just got a goal. Like it's, <laughs> it's such a pressure off. Uh, I'm now incredibly tense and nervous. So Ah, uh, right, I'm not happy about this. Played. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Here we go, here we go. No, you're not gonna fail. No, don't you dare. Oh. What a what a tackle! What a tackle! Right. Oh. No, 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 no. Committed everyone on this. No. Yes! Come on! Right, so that's it. I feel. Whew. I'm starting to sweat there a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. Mate. Also, producer Charlie's just sitting over there and he's laughing his head off because he's he he wants me to lose more than anybody has ever wanted me to lose in life. Pretty much the whole reason we're doing this, we were bored in we're bored in lockdown, you know. I was in Ireland, and we were just like, "You're playing FIFA all day. Let's try and do something with it." And also, you talk a massive game, so I, we want to see how good you are. And I was like, "Right, cool. Let's do something." And uh, I've lost every single one of them, so it's actually really come back to bite me this whole series. Oh. What position were you in football, Chris? Uh, I played left back. Left so yeah, back. I've started. I've started. I've started playing football again. So I sort of went through a. Um, I I didn't play for a long. Oh no 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 no. Um, Who is I didn't Cascade? play for. I didn't play for ages, and. Um, oh, oh my god, this is a shambles. <laughs> And this is too first. tense. I can't even speak to you. So I'm too. This is the problem. There's there's too many there's too many bad mistakes happening. Promising here. play from them. Boom. Ah. Oh. Not really. Um, yeah, who are you playing for now? I didn't play football for for ages and ages. Now I went to the park, 
and um, I just saw a group of lads playing and I really missed it and um, and so what I did it was quite sad really I went on Twitter and was just like does anyone in the area that I live um, have a like a group of lads that you play play football with that would be interested in another player oh he's committed oh he's got it oh oh we're on the break we're on the break let's go how's that not gone in no what was that Fred oh I need to remember to breathe and what was really sweet is all these lads uh, replied and I, so basically I turned up on one one session with these lads who all knew each other have been do playing for ages and then yeah you know a few of them listened to the crouchy podcast or listen on radio one so i felt like i was getting targeted really really quite badly um oh. but it was good it was really good to get back into because i think also you just feel like like a, a few years have gone and i just felt like i'm really out of shape i need just a good level of football yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. you can turn up and just have fun and it's not you, you know you're not going to get absolutely ridiculed for it and it's it's been good I've, I've really enjoyed it it's a decent social as well yeah no it's every sadly every time i've played proper football i have been ridiculed i've never played an 11 a side game of football in my life it's so weird. no it's just i always played rugby growing up it was just always the same and then uh, it was actually when I started going on tour, it was like five aside became the thing. It was like any day off, it was like there's always a five aside pitch book in Amsterdam or wherever you are. And you, yeah. if you don't play, that's when you're ridiculed. If you do play, you're also ridiculed. There's no way out of it, really. Oh, oh what, hold on. What ball? I'm never going to catch him. I'm never going to catch him. Oh. Woo. So, yeah, I had to start playing five aside, and that's when I realized that my greatest strength in football was my elbows what's the best five aside game you've played so far i think it was i was on tour with jp cooper and jp jp's a good footballer he's strong but his tour manager is a guy called simon and you know there's always that guy who played semi-pro and you're like all right sure you did no worries he's like you know oh, charles we're talking back in the day i'm like sure you did man. yeah whatever and he gets on the pitch, and I am huffing and puffing, cannot breathe, running around the pitch. And this guy's about 40 and is not out of breath at all, hasn't moved really from the middle of the pitch, and is just running the whole game. And he was just this midfielder, and he, I, it was just an amazing quality of football. I didn't score one goal. That was a cracker, by the way. Oh. It must be wicked, though. I love the idea of being on tour and doing five aside. It's um, amazing. It's like James Bay's got a good. Do you, ever, good do you do it on a five-a-side five pitch, or do you? Um... Yeah, 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 we have done it. I've done it once uh, in an arena, which was quite fun. Yeah, that's that's the dream. Like in the middle. Yeah, it was uh, Snow Patrol's tour, and we just had the whole arena floor, and there was just a big kickabout. But I was just, you always kind of, as a support act, you're always terrified of breaking somebody's legs in the main back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're paying for that tour if you do that. So, uh, but yeah, no, that was good fun as well. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm. I need to get into, I want to get back into rugby, but also I don't want to ever get hurt. So it's kind of a... Well, this is it. Are you allowed to do rugby when you're JC Stewart? Because I highly doubt yeah. it because my hands are the only thing I really have at this point, And even then it's, <laughs> it's dodgy. I, last time I played rugby was, I, I was about 16. And sadly, I was a, I was a, a late, a late grower. So I was about five foot four until I was about 16. You serious? Yeah, I was real short, and then I just grew one year. You know that stage when you're like 15, 16, where some of the guys are like short, and the other guys are oh, fully grown. No, 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 no! I just let you go. Yeah, uh, but yeah, and uh, I, I got played this the one private school in Northern Ireland. We played them, and they were just massive. And three of them lifted me up, dropped me back down, and I broke my hand, and I just walked off the pitch and never went back on one again. Yeah, but you yeah. don't hear of many uh, sort of many pop stars that are into rugby, do you? No, it's. I think it's more an Irish thing. Because I think in the in, in England it seems to be quite a posh thing to do, whereas in Ireland yeah. everybody kind of everybody kind of plays rugby in Ireland. It's like the only thing we're good at, so we really go for it. Oh, I'm in real trouble here. It's well, here we the go. It's like the signal. I don't know where to go. Oh, that's a bad oh, that's move. A oh, that's a penalty. Oh, that's no, that's so much because of the lag. Yeah, it's just. The thing is, are you going to go left or right? It's the key. I've just got to commit. Oh, that was quite tasty, actually. I did enjoy that. I'm going to have to switch things up there. Bruno Fernandez, what a man. Yeah.
What a man. If he could have my children, I'd let him. Prospect of even more goals. Yeah. Four two is the score. Oh jeez. It's gone really slow this, isn't it? It has. Oh no. Come on, do something. Oh no. Difficult for the defender against the Luke Shaw is not catching him. Oh, that's just depressing. <laughs> Troy Deeney. One of the scariest men I've ever met in real life, Troy Deeney, I think. Just, just a beast of a man. He's Where did just you meet him then? I met him at the weirdest place ever. I met him in the, the changing rooms of Tottenham Hotspur. Um, oh. You met him in the change. What, what were you doing there? It was like the launch of the NFL in England. Like oh, in the UK right, last yeah. Year. And uh, there was like, I did literally, I was there with my mate and neither of us knew anybody. And then I just started playing FIFA and Troy Dini started playing beside me. And I just looked across and I'm like, he is a big man. He is a unit. He is a big man, yeah. You don't want to mess with. No, I reckon, I reckon if you're playing with, playing actual football with him, he would end my life. Oh, that was he's, um, he's that such, I know it's the cliche, but he's such a nice bloke. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, um, so I've known him a while. Um, I think I'd just annoy him, to be honest, because I'm one of those people that acquired his number at some point. And uh, I, I've got no doubt at all he, he regrets that. I've got a few people like that. It's like any time they do anything, a few sports people that if they score a goal live on TV, I'm still like, oh, mate, that was class. Really loved that. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm expecting there. A text back it's, on the pitch. It's, I don't know. It's, 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 <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? It's, it's when you've had a couple of drinks, right? And there's been yes. some massive Watford games and I've been in the Who's pub or I've been whatever. in the stands or whatever. And then I just gnaws them off. And then I have to send a really pathetic <laughs> apology. <laughs> the day. Come on, get there. Oh, the yeah, no, I've done that recently with um, a Formula One driver and now I just keep sending him DMs asking if I can race. I don't like it late at night. <laughs> it's quite What's dodgy. your? Yeah, I do. So I do this a lot. Like I have a couple of drinks and then I'll, I'll message uh, Watford players. It's a real. I'm sure issue. your partner's loving it. You know, it's just like you could be texting other women, but no, Watford players. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> it's so true. Thing is, we're having a lovely chat, but I need to play some aggressive That's football. And I'm trying to take your mind off it. You know. Right, hold the ball up and away. Yes. Oh, no. That was so tasty. But Pereira can't run. Why is he on the pitch? Who put him there? Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, God. What was that? Big tackle. Oh, big tackle. Huge challenge. Big. Look, short in the first good thing he's ever done on the football here. pitch. Right. I'm in big Did trouble here. Oh. How many drunk um, slides into the DM have there been for, say, like, collaborations? Do you know what? I'm, I'm not big on the collaboration slides. It's usually sports things because my head still wants to be a professional rugby player, even though I wasn't good when I was 15, never mind now. Um, and so, yeah, I just I, I did one the other day. Actually, I found it in my DMs. Ulster Rugby, my local, like, big club. I'd like reposted something on Instagram and I had DM'd them at 11 o'clock at night, essentially begging them for a game when quarantine was over. Um, so that's not gone well. I also did it to my local hometown club and they said yes, which is more, more worrying, I think. This isn't good. Craig's got to do something wonderful here. <laughs> Craig Cascart. Have you ever met Craig? Uh, I don't think I have, actually. He's, a, he's one of our best Northern Irish men. We don't have many good players. Oh, so you can't do that. You can't do that. I did do that, though. I did, and I, I'll take it all day. Only a yellow? Uh, uh, this is very tense. It's really tense. Oh! Right. I need to get... <laughs> this is it. It's really hard, this, having a chat with you, and actually, especially when you're losing, you want that. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Right, we're back. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on. Oh, for goodness sake. What a ball. What a tackle. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> this is going to be a problem for Craig because he's about to, I think he's about to be sent off here for a challenge that he's about. <laughs> Hasn't made the challenge it's like yet, but you're, you're... It's Inception. Oh! Oh! oh. Get up! Oh. Well, they didn't test the keeper. I've made those the noises in a while. Like oh, All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's away. The attack of the chase. No. Yes. 
He's getting the ball. Oh, oh yeah, that's a foul. He's, that's, off. he's off the pitch. I he's off. I would have, I would have rather the advantage. I know. <laughs> this is outrageous. This, this game. Is... Oh no! Come on, ludicrous, ludicrous. <laughs> That's what? That's I don't know what's happened there. I think Craig Craig's just there. scored. Right. <laughs> I have scored a free kick in one of these games in the series. I want to see if I can rag it up again. Come on. Oh, oh that was decent. All I want oh, in my life someday is just to score a world leader free kick. 4 3 at Old Trafford. Ah, oh, no, well done. Well done. Hodge. So that's four three. We're gonna. What's the what's the we're next game? We're gonna rematch. Then? We're gonna hit. Yeah. So the next game is international. If you like, we can do home international teams. However, that means it's England, Northern Ireland, which does put me at quite a severe disadvantage. That's Manchester United against Aldershot. One of us should be the internet. Why don't you be Northern Ireland? Then? Why don't I represent a different nation? I could be. Okay. I'm happy to be. What about? Does Wales suffice? Or is Wales? Yeah, we can hard? do Wales. We can do Wales. That's okay. Yeah, what's the crack with you then? What's going on with performing and that? Do you, like, how does it work? Because I take it you just got to kind of review everything now. And it's an interesting one for me because obviously I'm like uh, an emerging artist is the word everyone uses, and it's like it means that you're just always on the go. There's no yeah. sort of like album campaign yet. It's just like you're just. I've been going for like a year now, and it's like it'll be another year or two before. You know, we I maybe get that break of it all, but it's uh, it's interesting. So obviously I had a tour booked in May that was going to go. I had festival like loads and loads of festivals over the summer that all got pulled, and it sucks. And that that would have been massive for you as well, because these would have been the ones where you really yeah. saw like the audience and that, you know. Exactly, and there were big festivals. There was you know Isle of Wight and Pink Pop and Hurricane Southside. It was like crazy stuff, and then shows in America and Asia that kind of had to get pulled and all sorts of stuff, but. Everybody's in the same boat, and I think I kind of wallowed in it for a week or so, and then I was like, right, let's just do something, you know? And then I just started making stupid videos, and yeah, yeah, I got the totally. Jennifer Aniston thing, which was funny. And then, yeah, I've just been putting out music. So well, that was massive. That was hilarious. And she still hasn't replied to my DM. It's really, I, my numerous DMs. If you're talking about drunk DMing. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was an amazing shot. Um, didn't DM her that. I said, oh, I need to get this ball out of the box for it. Oh, that's a penalty. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a, a penalty. foul. How is that, how is that not <laughs> given? That is ridiculous. <laughs> All right. I pretty much just... ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and no, I pretty much just said, you know, thanks for sharing the video. Love your work. And then did there was a, a sort of marriage proposal situation sort of just tied on at the end. Just, just in case. Yeah, why not? You, you gotta shoot your shot, you know. I was actually yeah, thinking absolutely. about your Mina Kunis incident, and I was just like, "Look, what's the worst that could happen?" You know, she doesn't reply, and that's exactly what did happen. Actually, oh, what a ball! What a ball! What a ball! What a ball! Oh. How's this not oh. for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I met Jennifer Anderson as well. Do you know about this? I did not know about this. So I've met her a couple of times, and the first time I met her, um, we had really good chat. Like everything was cool. Um, yes. Oh, geez, everything's slow, isn't it? Um, oh, come on, I can't keep giving the way. So yeah, we had a, we had a really good chat. And then uh, I got the chance to interview her again. This is madness. This, yes, is, uh, this is madness. I can't, I can't go with all. Um, yeah, so I met Jennifer Aniston, uh, interviewed her, everything went well. I gave her a Watford shirt. And then um, uh, the coolest thing was after that interview, I was just like, I was in the hotel because it was another one of these junket ones. And um, oh, I, I keep giving you the ball. This is. And she came out with the Watford shirt over her shoulder. Which was no way. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I would have died. I would have been like, that's it. Snap that. Oh, there you go. That was mental. So, uh, but did she come to a game in the end? Was it, was it like, did you get she, she never came. She, she never did. And then the next time I met her, we did this interview and she was really off with me. And I couldn't. Oh, really? Yeah, I couldn't work out why. Like she was really. It's like every question I said, she was horrible. <laughs> and um, I, I was like, 
I honestly wanted the ground to swallow me up because you know she's the nicest, nicest person. Yeah. I just felt like everything I was asking was upsetting her. Even stuff where it wasn't even... It, oh, you can score here. Oh, right, we're going to have to stop talking. <laughs> what's happened is Scott has spoken to her before and just <laughs> told her to be really difficult with me. <laughs> right, so what and sort I, of stuff did you do? <laughs> and I didn't know. How mad is that? I'd, I'd say, like, are you having a nice time in the UK? And she'd be like, I think that's a bit of an inappropriate question to ask, don't you? Don't you think we should be talking about the movie? Like, it was, it was just ridiculous. Oh, like, man. It was such a stress dream. I've only I've only had one encounter with a friend's character before, and it it went it went almost as badly as that. But nobody told it, nobody made it go badly. It was just me. Um, and I was I was backstage at a show, and I, my friend's band were supporting. So I went backstage, was stealing their alcohol as is appropriate to do at a, at a show when you're not playing. And anyway, it was walking out, and who comes out of the next room just straight in front of me? But Monica from Friends. Actually, no way. Monica from Friends. And, uh, and I look at her and I'd been binge watching Friends for like the last two weeks before this. Like straight up, it was all I was doing. And I just waved at her straight up because my head just went, oh, that's Monica. You know Monica. Yeah. And didn't think it was Courtney Cox and just straight up waved at her. She then awkwardly looks at me and kind of half waves back. And I'm like, ah. And then I went, oh, no, it's okay. I don't know you. I just know you from the TV. Um, <laughs> Why would you say that? It's all right. I don't know. It was the most. I I don't. I like to think I'm not a person who gets starstruck, but I was. I was bananas. I lost it. I just lost the plot. And then she came over to me, and she was very lovely, and we talked about Amazon Prime grocery deliveries. And yeah, it was still. Now that I more I talk about it right now, actually, I do feel that similar urge of kind of wanting to die a little bit again. But yeah, that was my experience with Courtney Cox. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. That was a scummy goal. It was a bit of a scummy goal, that. Smith? That was, to be fair, it was a horrible experience with Jennifer Aniston, but the nice thing about it was that it was it was obviously a prank. Yeah, so, it was all real. That was the worst bit. So I have so, to live with like, the rest of my life now. Oh, come on. Oh, no, that's offside. Well, that's the thing with my job is I feel permanently on edge because, <laughs> hey, you know, you, you never know what the true agenda is. But it's kind of the same on my side of like, especially talking to guys, you know, like radio interviews and stuff. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on. Honest, right? Yeah. Be honest with radio interviews because I was having this chat with someone the other day that I feel like there's always been a thing with radio where you come in to promote something. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the guys on the radio like myself, we want to do something fun with you, which ultimately goes viral or appeals to your fan group and gets like big numbers. So yeah. the, 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 some people are up for it and some people aren't, but the basic formula is you come and talk about the song and then you've got to do something silly in exchange. Yeah. However, like it doesn't actually have to be like that. Like sometimes I think like just having a good chat is enough. And like, I do think people's tastes with this. This is this is mad because whenever one of us talks, the other person the talks, other the other person's going. Problem. I know the other person's just trying to half well, listen, but also trying to score a goal. I've been in so many situations where you talk to pop stars or artists, and it's clear that they it's like we're getting them to do something that they don't really want to do. Yeah. And I see on other radio stations stuff where it's like it is just so benign and yeah. crap what you're being asked to do. Um, do you do you find that a lot? I think there's and a there's a bit annoying? of I think there's a bit of both. I genuinely think you and Scott and most people on Radio One actually tread a good line of fun and silly, but also it's nearly so fun and silly that people know what they're getting themselves in for a bit, and it's like oh that's what they do. People yeah. enjoy it. Where there's I've done a lot of stuff where I'm like really. I actually personally I enjoy doing the different stuff because for every interview that I do with you guys or something where it's fun. I've also done 50 interviews where they've asked, I could literally tell you what five questions they're about to ask before they ask them. And I have to try and give an interesting answer. Yeah. So it's kind of like, for me, I love the fun stuff because it's more, yeah, it's just better. 
but also then it leads you to say stupid stuff. And I'm always a little bit on edge because I always end up getting excited and talking and then saying something I really shouldn't say. And then it ends up being yeah. said paper and completely wrong and I'm in trouble with everybody. <laughs> and yeah. But that's kind of what you've got to do though, because the thing is, the more you say something controversial, the more likely it is to be a kind of a headline, right? Which it's ultimately tough, is... It's so tough to find that line kind of, of what you want, isn't it? Yeah, but it's so funny. I'm like, even like my PR was asking me over the like quarantine, she's like, you know, we need some interesting stories for the papers. I'm like, I mean, not being funny, I've been sitting in a house in Ireland for the past month, I don't really know what celebrity you want me to talk about in this one. It's probably like, the obvious one is Lewis, like, you see it with yeah. him a lot as well, like, it, it's a funny game to play because you sort of do want attention, but you want it for the right reasons, don't you? Yeah, you've got to play that line of just, yeah, getting attention that people can laugh at, but they're not either demonizing or laughing at you you know that's and it's a really because that's all papers want to do the whole time is to find a story that people create that they can create a character and whether it's a good or bad character they couldn't care less do you know what i mean they just need a character to yeah sell. um so it's a re oh no that was a he's gonna be offside there isn't he yeah he's offside no he's not surely oh no he's not i thought i thought he was about a mile offside there What's the worst thing you've, you think you've ever said in an interview or done? So I remember seeing Jordan North with the young blood thing, which was oh, yeah. potentially was one of my favorite so things. I, oh. I was on with him. And yeah. um, it was crazy because everyone had said before, like, you know, <laughs> just be careful. Don't mention Halsey because it's all a bit sensitive at the moment. And it, he's obviously just had, had that on his head. Oh, we lost connection. <laughs> no. That was 3-3. Three, three. I think that's fair. Yeah, that's a draw. Do we, we call that, that one a draw, do we? We'll call that one a draw. And uh, What's the next yeah, game? Fair. So the next game is our third and final game. And it's essentially just whatever you want. Well, let's talk plans. So, so new song. Um, new song, yep. We did a, we, we sounds, shot a music video wicked. yesterday. Thank you, man. Yeah, we shot a music video yesterday. So how did you do that? Distanced. Uh, we were able to get a, a sort of a skeleton crew and just everyone makes two meters apart. We had like ambulances on site checking people's temperatures and fire brigades and all sorts of stuff. I set a lot of things on fire. It was very good fun. I'm very excited for that to come out. That's all, that, the whole premise for the video, they're like, you know what, do you want? Do you want something artsy? And I'm like, I just want to set things on fire. And that's what we did. Totally. You're at this stage now where you can start doing these these kind of ideas that you've always dreamed of. Pretty much, yeah, because I Need You To Hit Me was kind of written a while ago, and as soon as I wrote it, I was like, I know what the video looks like for this. And they're like, oh, what is it? And I'm like, I've told you before, fire. And um, yeah, so it, it has been cool, you know. We literally just got an old MG set outside a country house and lit it up. What about you? Have you got, obviously, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the Peter Crouch podcast, which I'm not going to lie. As much as I, I hate to be that guy, is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, podcasts in the world. It's just yeah, ridiculous. but it's, it's fun. But it, I do miss being in the pub with it. Like yeah, the whole that thing was that was is, is, a lot of it, wasn't it? Yeah, the whole thing with it is a bit of a pub chat, and you know, I think it's great. And and obviously, we all miss the pub. We all miss all sorts of things, but. Um, I'm looking forward to a time we can all get back in the pub and yeah. But it's just gigs and everything. It's just it. It makes you realise you've taken so much for granted. And and also that we're so lucky to have so many fun things that we all enjoy doing. Hundred percent. Our jobs are a bit ridiculous, and what we what we get sick of doing is like as soon as they're taken away from us, I'm like, oh man, that's everything I've ever wanted to do. Though. So, I think that's gonna be good for everyone moving forward. Like. I, yeah. I think it's going to be great for artists as well, and I, I just think everyone alike. I, I just really hope we reach a point where everything can be super positive. But then, I, I think you're in such a good position though, because you know, as you said, you, you're an emerging artist, as you put it. But also, that's really exciting, and there's going to be such a hunger for live music, and you are one of the best live music artists that we that we have in the UK right now. Oh, and I think. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be really important for people when they when they get back to see you see you live, and you're going to be buzzing to be live, and it's it's going to be yeah, it's going to be a bit of a of, bit of a thing. Yeah, no, I, I can't wait to get back, man. It's like for such a long time, I'd I'd been playing live shows by myself because I couldn't afford a band, and I couldn't, you know, it was trying to get these songs across, but just me and a guitar, and I'm like, well, it doesn't really sound like this. 
And then over the last yeah. sort of six months, I was able to start playing with the band and it was starting to sound perfect and how I wanted it. And then all the live shows stopped and I'm like, no, <laughs> this was just getting to where I was getting to be. But, but how is that playing with a band then? Is it, is I it, love it difficult yeah. finding the people to be in the band or like, how do you go about Honestly, that? Honestly, I process? find it's, I got real lucky. Two of the bands of the were class. two of my it's best friends intimate. anyway. And, uh, and then the other guy was sort of, you have a musical director who kind of helps you out. And he was like, I've got this bass player. I want to try him out. I'm like, cool. And he just came to rehearsals one day and we went to the pub and I'm like, yeah, he's a legend. And it just worked out really nicely. Yeah, it's been really weird for that. And I miss just going and being miserable in a van with 10 guys. <laughs> just like, you know, uh, going on tour. But next summer is going to be ridiculous, I think. People are going to lose the map. Does the tour bus get bigger and bigger the more oh, successful funny. you get then? Uh, yeah, it does, but it also gets more crowded and more crowded. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah, right. a van with five people oh, is God. nicer than a bus with 20 people, yeah, you know? You know. Uh, but no, I, I'm, I love tour buses. I've never not be excited about sleeping in a bunk. Have you ever slept on a tour bus? Oh. Yeah, we did this thing on the radio and they gave us um, a tour bus for a week. Which was pretty mad. Like, yeah, it was a mad experience. But those bunks, so, so, so we had it laid out so that the end of it, the, the kind of bit where normally like exactly. yourself would sleep, like the big double bed bit, yeah, we just turned into a cinema, and then we yeah, were all that's in. What we it's, did it's, well. a, it's a tiny bit like a morgue. It's like it, there's just these <laughs> gaps that you sleep in. It's, it's just really, kinda, it's really you can't hard. even like I'm I'm quite an uncoordinated tall person, so I just I can't sit up. I can't, I'm yeah. like, I have to roll, literally do a roll out of there. Yeah, and, uh, but no, I love, we do the same. There's no star beds in my bus because, you know, I think I'd be told quite quickly to get over myself. You need to explain this. So there's always room. If someone wanted to be a real diva for there to be like a proper bed on it. Yeah. But then you are very different to everyone else that's on the bus. It's the same. Like if you, yeah, I mean, most tours I've been on where I've been sharing a bus with other artists, if I'm the support act and they're letting me come on or whatever, there has Good been a star bed and essentially we'll there's a big that. bit at the back. Yeah, like a lounge Good where everybody can sit and watch TV or you can we'll close the door intercept. and make it into a double bed with a, a wardrobe and their own that's TV true. and stuff. And it's cool if they want to do that. That's cool. But like, I like the kind of, I'm with my mates on tour and it'd be kind of weird if you're on holiday with your mates. I always think when decided you were getting the better room and you weren't going to see them for the whole thing. Do you think you'll ever bring oh, the, the no, podcast on tour and you guys get a bus? Yeah, we did. We did this thing called Crouch Fest, which was yeah. it was Crouchella. wicked. Oh, 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 he's got to go. Crouchella, yeah. We'll have to get you involved in the next one. Um, I mean, I'd be, but that I'd was, be, I'll serve pints to be good. <laughs> Mate, it was one of the best experiences. You know, like we didn't know how. No one knew what it was about, and then we brought Liam Gallagher along. <laughs> how did, how just did that fans even happen? Of the podcast. It that, just peaked, and they all did it for nothing. That's the, that's yeah. the crazy thing. They all did it just where they listened to the podcast and reached out to it. So Liam Gallagher did it, um, the Yumi at Six lads, Tom Grennan, yeah. basically just anyone anyone that had contacted me saying they were fans of the podcast, I yeah. just kind of booked and yeah. ev everyone was up for it. it and Crowd that's what made it so good is that there wasn't really a massive agenda with it. Like It wasn't even really a PR thing, even yeah. though like obviously a lot of people listen. So yeah. there is always that, but actually it was people that genuinely just seem to enjoy the podcast. I'm, tr I'm trying to pull oh, it. Is that a penalty? Oh, oh offside. Um, but it was wicked. So yeah, I, 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 I could. <gasps> oh. oh, that was yeah. a great finish. It's just mad how that took off. Cause I remember hearing about it a few years ago and I'm like, Chris Stark and Peter Crouch are doing a podcast. What's that about? And then literally yeah. just listened to one and I was like, oh, that's cool. And you just, it's one of those things, you just become part of it as a listener, I think. You are just you feel like you're nearly sitting there around the table. Just but like for listening. me, it's the nearest thing to, but yeah, but for me, it's the nearest thing to being an artist, I reckon, because when you make a song, you get to put something out there and it feels like you've made this thing right mm -hmm. it sounds a bit deep it's sort of 3 a.m chat this but then you <laughs> you put this song out there and you've created something from nothing mm -hmm. and that's what this podcast feels like that's to me it feels like we've made well, something really kind of positive and people enjoy it and, sure. and really it's it's nice to have done that it's nice to have been part of that process and be part of something you know because radio one was there before me and it will be there after me and 
Um, whereas the Real podcast, it felt like we made it from scratch. And, you know, from those initial chats Order that we had, and it's turned into something that's, you know, really popular. And so that's been, that's been really nice for me. Um, 100%. And it gives you a bit of confidence in what you're doing because you know what? Like, I'm not the world's greatest presenter. I'm not, you know, I'm never going to be that that sort of polished, um, you know, real BBC <laughs> um, presenter. But then that's not me. And and what's so nice about the podcast is it's it's another one of these projects that I've done where it just feels like I can really be myself and and that's cool and, yeah. and, and people enjoy it because I think it feels real and it is real and that's what I like about it that's class and it's like Peter is such a, a nice lad he actually last time I've only met him once and he ended up breaking me and my housemate into the 1975s backstage um, it's a very very funny funny night you sent me a photo from did me. I? yeah I didn't know yeah, I'd done that okay great <laughs> oh, fantastic um, he is He's a top bloke, but he loves you. We, I've, I've, I've talked to him about you before. Um, no, he's a lovely lad. Because I was hanging out with uh, Abby's sort of brother and sister, and then yeah, he just came over, and he's like, you guys coming? And I'm like, to where? He's like, all right, take our passes. We're getting in anyway. He'll just come walk behind us. Nobody will say anything. I'm like, sweet. Um, but yeah, super nice guy. He's cool, because also he's so aware of... You know, he's a really famous bloke and he's yeah. really aware. He's really aware and he, he doesn't play up to it and he uses it for good. And, he does, um, yeah. I think he's a, I think he's a top bloke and, and he's a real music man. Like, he loves, yeah, he loves music, it, doesn't he? Yeah. And he supports the right type of, like, sort of unsigned or emerging artists. And mm -hmm. I really like that with him. He, he, he really does sort of use his name as a bit of a force for good. If you could do one thing after quarantine, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get I mean, back? Me, me and you in the pub. Um, it's been long overdue, actually. We can, it has. We, do keep, um, we had a very brief drink. We do. We, 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 we are both the biggest rain checkers of all time, I think. <laughs> yeah, Combined, it's, 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 a, it's a complete nightmare. Yeah, what's going on with you? Are you are you still single? Are you in a relationship? I, I'm what's not. I've, uh, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm all tied up at the minute. So... Uh, yeah, are you? Uh, yeah, find myself, find myself a nice English girl. So <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. The boys at home are dubious, but you know I'm trying to convince them. Yeah, that was the worst free kick of all time. <laughs> I, well, that's that's really good. That's really good because you um, you had a lot that's of admirers. A <laughs> um, so yeah, that's fascinating that you've uh, you've made you've made that move. Uh, but congratulations. Well, Thank ball. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I feel very proud of myself. <laughs> you know, I'm a big boy now. So yeah, it's... <laughs> grow, grown up, grown up. This is turning into a weirdly kind of intense game. I think we've both recognised the, the levels of shine oh! going on here. Oh, what oh. happened there? The goalkeeper didn't even move. Right. I know, I'm actually like, I haven't breathed in a little minute. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, what we need to do with this is we need to do this again, but I think we do it in the evening when we can lay on a few drinks as well. So that sounds um, like a very big plan. What is on your rider generally? Do you, um, um I have, have a bit of a weird rider. Of diva demands? I don't. I, I, I actually, I think I have the opposite of diva. I, I asked for one nice thing and I've never gotten it. And I used to work at a whiskey distillery in Ireland. So I asked for like a single malt bottle of that whiskey. <laughs> Nobody's ever oh, given it nice. to me, ever. Um, also, white socks are the best thing on my rider. Again, I rarely get those. I rarely get anything on my rider because I've, uh, I've rarely been the headline show act. That was only starting this May. So uh, usually I just get what I'm given and hopefully a dressing room. But uh, yeah, no, white What's socks. What's with the socks? Bro, you can never have too many socks on tour. You think you've got too many? You don't. You don't oh. have too many. So when you're on tour, hit me up. I'll, I'll write you a little rider. We'll get, we'll get it over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few, a few meats that. and cheeses are always good. You know, a little bit of a selection. A couple of bands do this, right, where they get speakers on as the warm-up act the or comedians. Oh, no, that's... Like that. that's Have you no, seen that? That, that? that needs to go in the bin quite hard. That See, I think it's off. a bit odd as well. Who did I, I think I saw... Was it Piff the Magic Dragon supported Mumford & Sons? That's right, yeah. 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 And he was and on I've the album cover and everything. I've seen a band of man support, I think, Ed Sheeran. That, he, but oh, that's, that, a bit, that's a bit musical, though. I so get that a, a little bit, yeah. 
I mean, yeah, no, we, you can't be having that. I love, I've got, basically, Snow Patrol have been big supporters of mine from a, a while ago. And they give me a shot to go on tour with them. And every tour they have is nearly exclusively Northern Irish and Irish musicians. And I think that's just, but I think it's amazing because they bring people who should not be going on an arena tour. who would never get the chance to go on an arena tour with them, you know? And uh, yeah. I kind of love that because but where I'm from, it's so small, man. It's like, it's a beautiful place, but there's not many opportunities. You know, people try really hard, but Gary Nightbody is recognized, I think, that between him and Tudor Cinema Club, they're the, by far the biggest acts from where we're from, and they really help local bands out. So I'd love to do that going forward. And it's, it's always about just giving artists you believe in a chance, I think, because that's I was lucky enough to get that when I was coming up, and you really need it. But at the same yeah, time, I if would... someone wants to pay me 50 grand to come on tour with me, let them have it at the same time. You know what I mean? It's, uh... is, that, is that how it works? Do people pay uh, for... I've never done that, but I've, I have heard that that is that's a thing that happens occasionally. I think maybe the bigger pop tours, that might happen. Oh, no. Ah! Oh, come on! no. No, no, He's done no, it in the 90th no, no. minute. He's done it. No, no, no. <laughs> do you think FIFA? Do you think FIFA rigs it? Right, I swear. Like, how many games finish in finishes a draw in FIFA? I always wonder. It. It's like it gets to the final five minutes and just stuff where it would have gone another way. <laughs> I've got this theory that uh, right. I feel like you're like those. Any other game? <laughs> any other game? If that if that had happened at thirty-five minutes, I think would have hit the post and then gone bouncing Ron, I, off in another 100%. direction. You're like one of those FIFA YouTube conspiracy theories that I watch at like 2 a.m. where it's like I've FIFA's not seen scripting that. the game. Oh, bro, I'm upset. Sometimes I play FIFA and watch other people play FIFA at the same time on YouTube. I don't oh, know why. I love that. I'm, I'm big into it. Big manager mode is like my thing. I love it. But yeah, I watch like conspiracy theories as well about because people, the real FIFA players hate FIFA. But I don't understand it because I play it all day. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. Oh, mate. Right, well done. Um, I was. Massive. I'm pretty yeah, proud I'm of this. To, I'm, I'm keen to do it again, but I think what we should do is um, just lay on a few drinks. Yeah. And then it's it's like it's shots for goals and things like that. So we do this again late. Night I'm edition. I'm very in for this and just see how much I can wreck this apartment. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's harder for us to rain check on these things when um, when it's at night. You know, when it's a night and there's alcohol involved, because when yeah. yeah, I'll be like, Chris, you're not doing five live. You know, at nine o'clock yeah. at night, that's a complete lie. Amazing. Thank you so much for 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 playing FIFA. Essentially, that's yeah, what we mate, do. Now. Well, this is it, it's the best idea ever. Um, I'm just, just trying to make football. it my job. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just yeah. if there's any way I can make playing <laughs> FIFA into a job that I have, that is what I'm Go trying on. to do. I'm sure you'll make it work. But and, mate, and thanks, thanks obviously the, is on and. The forfeit was that you give me control of the Peter Crouch podcast. You were you were told about that before, right? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah it is. So yeah, I will yeah. be now taking that over for the foreseeable. But thank you so much for, for being on it, Chris. Mate, nice one. And um, yeah, as I always say to you, anything you need at all, just give us a shout, yeah? I appreciate that, bro. Cool. Uh, I actually need my, right, my laundry done. I need my bed sheets done next week. So I'll throw them of down. Course. You're getting done. Send Sweet. them my way.